this time on roadkill, it's a hundred percent more mayhem. <laughs> Both of them. Remember the general mayhem? It's the 68 Dodge Charger that I traded for a set of cylinder heads, and then we built it up with a used 440 engine from a motorhome, as well as some leftover parts from our 73 Plymouth Fury that we'd raced at 24 hours of lemons. There, I solved that problem. We ended up taking the Charger to Dirtfish Rally School in Washington and going full dukes with this thing, turning the car into a legend and creating what was probably the best three minutes of roadkill action of all time. In August 2015, it was time to make the legend of the General Mayhem even bigger. We got into a bloodthirsty drag race battle with the TV heroes from Gas Monkey Garage, building up to a cutthroat drag race at our first ever Roadkill Nights event. Now this deal was a parking lot race at a homemade drag strip that we put together at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. 10,000 people showed up to watch. The stakes were high, the tension was in the air, and it was huge as we pulled to the line against Gas Monkey Garage. But we're not allowed to show you that. <laughs> nope, big time TV politics stepped in and prevented us from even filming these guys. We are not even allowed to show you the results of the race. Never mind that it was all over Facebook seconds after we crossed the finish line. Never mind that right now you can probably find 30 videos of this race on YouTube. And never mind that you probably already know what happened. Nope, we're not allowed to show it to you here. That's reality TV for you. But what we can do is show you the behind the scenes debacle that got us into this whole thing. It all started back when we got our sponsorship from Dodge. And what's the first thing you do when you're in that situation? We'll scam a 707 horsepower Hellcat drivetrain, of course. Our plan was to put that engine into the general mayhem and then road trip it from Detroit to Washington to go back to the Dirtfish Rally School. We knew it was gonna be a huge job with the drivetrain swap though, and we didn't have time to finish it. And so we sent the car to our buddies at Diversified Creations in Brighton, Michigan. This is Diversified Creations, home of our buddy Mike Copeland, who is an expert at putting new stuff into old cars. And he's gonna take everything that makes the SRT Hellcat amazing and put it in the general mayhem and make it more awesome than it already is. Because if we tried to do this, the episode would come out two years from now and the car would be on fire. That car right there is a donor, and I know what you're thinking. It's like these guys at Roadkill are gonna wreck another brand new Hellcat Charger to make this stuff happen. Nope, that's actually a crusher car. Dodge is gonna squeeze this thing no matter what we do, and so it's no big loss. We're not taking another Hellcat out of uh, circulation by doing this. The plan is absolutely gut that car to death and put everything out of it into the general mayhem. And now we're gonna send off this poor 2015 Charger with an epic set of burnouts. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Copeland freak yeah. out there? <laughs> How soon before the police get here? I have a feeling he's got him on the payroll. I think we're all right. No. Around Detroit, they don't care. The cops come watch. It's pretty good. <laughs> Bye-bye, <laughs> tires. Oh, nice that was you. good. Well, as much as I hate to do it, I think we should take it apart. All right. Impressive. Wow. I don't know if you realize this, but someone's been doing burnouts in your parking lot. What? <laughs> Allegedly. Oh, my God. Allegedly.
We're done with a bunch of good tire smoke and now we're actually disassembling this thing. It will never move under its own power again until it's revitalized in the general mayhem. We're taking the battery out, batteries in the trunk. There you go, lights out, it's all over. Terminator's dead. <laughs> yep. All right, I guess we can get an airplane and leave. <laughs> okay, we're done. Good work, all right. <laughs> all right, we're rolling up on this wood. It is so weird that we're not doing this by ourselves. We're gonna get so much criticism from you, the audience member, but I don't feel bad because free Hemi. Well, there it is. So we'll get it down and get it off the cradle. <sighs> Rough day. Wanna have a beer? Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> we left Diversified with one plan and when we came back a couple weeks later, the whole thing had changed. We made a Facebook post pointing out that Dodge sponsors both Roadkill and Gas Monkey Garage, and that turned into a Roadkill fan issuing a challenge. Two of us from Roadkill, two of the stars from Gas Monkey, one junkyard, and a build-off to see who could build a better car out of trash in three days. Of course, the superstars ignored that. <laughs> But then Dodge compelled them to pay attention because we had a Hellcat swap in the works and so did they. So the game changed into a Hellcat versus Hellcat showdown. And we'd been setting up an eighth mile drag strip in the parking lot of the Silverdome for roadkill nights. So we decided that was where it was gonna go down. Gas Monkey publicly taunted us that we could make any rules we wanted and they would come and win. And so we posted this. What we're gonna do is an eighth mile drag race. Oh, yeah. Street race style, one and done. Single pass, flashlight drags. Rule number two, you gotta drive. It's your yeah, car. That's it's your right. It's your brand, it's your tequila, all that. No reality show BS. Richard's driving the car, 3,500 pounds without driver, stock suspension concept, 12 inches on the ground, and you gotta run a Hellcat engine and transmission. Did I get everything? See you in a couple weeks. See you soon. Of course, the TV guys ended up ignoring 100% of the rules that we gave them. However, we stuck with it. We didn't want to hack up the general mayhem into a full tube chassis drag car, because we eventually want to be able to take this thing back to its roots. So this is absolutely everything out of the donor car. Pretty much. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. There's some of the stuff that we didn't put in, but uh, overall. Oh, wait, look at this. The projector lights are in there. Yeah, go ahead. Just like the old ones. In the housing? Yeah. Yeah, we would have gotten this done in three or four years, I think. That's probably about the time it would have taken. You're being generous. You know, we integrated all the original radiator, transmission cooler, uh, intercooler into the front of the car. Wow. You know, on the E85 with the crazy tune and everything else, they'll make 800. Okay. Yeah, maybe a touch over 800. This right now, I have 250 horse pills in it, so we're at 950, 975. We're not safe. We're not sane, but we're not completely insane. But you need to look inside. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. It's a brand new car. Wow. We've got newfangled 2015 stuff splattered all over the interior of the 68. Most of it even works. I mean, we've got every possible warning light going on, but we have a functional touchscreen. We can control the transmission in here. The start button works. We even have a USB plug and cup holders. The rear of the car, this is true roadkill to extremes. <laughs> you just threw the gas tank in the trunk. Yes. Yeah. I love it. We keep all that stuff functioning. Obviously all the electricals back here, Optima battery. That runs uphill a little bit. Yeah, but the, they fill from the bottom. Oh, so okay. they vent the tank out to the top of the fill neck. Nice. So that's how you fill the car with gas. Oh man, this is cool. None of the aftermarket K members work with this kind of application. Yeah. So we modified that, built their own engine mounts. It's solid mounted. The headers are roadkill, true to form. You beat them and then fired. To clear the torsion bars, we put them in the vise, heated four tubes with a torch and, and twisted it over. The guys integrated exhaust pass-throughs in it, trans mount. We took the original drive shaft, cut it apart, and we took a one-ton Dodge end and then integrated it and welded it in and created a, a CV. So this runs true to it, and then we put the slip yoke into the rear drive shaft. It's a 410 gear with a spool, 35 spine axles, Caltrack springs, Caltrack bars. The brakes wouldn't fit, so I had to get these, and I knew what to get because we, uh, we went through that with my Jeep. Do you see how big a meat is on the back? God, those wheels cost more than this car originally. Yeah, the wheels are expensive. Obviously, my guys knocked it out of the park. A lot of long nights and... Uh, I hope you give them all raises. <laughs> Let's oh, not man. get carried away. They deserve it. <laughs> you haven't got your bill yet. Slave driver. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Can we go drive it now? What's left? <laughs> First thing we're gonna do is head to the drag strip and get our very first passes at Milan Dragway. I'm gonna have a look at the starting line because we told them not to prep the track at all. Yeah, this is more realistic. I think of this what is we'll more to with. what we're gonna see. And plus, I mean, we're we're evaluating this. So if we can make it leave on this, yeah, then I think we're in pretty good shape. The first thing we're gonna face here is big traction problems because we're gonna be racing just on a almost unprepped parking lot. The line out here is a little bit better than that, but still we have somewhat of a small tire on the car, a lot of torque and a 471 to one first gear, which is really low in that torque flight eight speed, especially with our 410 rear gear. So we're gonna try and leave in second and see if it'll actually hook up. Now, if I can get it to hook in first, it'll be amazing, but we're just assuming that's not gonna happen. So that's what I'm playing with. Definitely leaves. Um, so, doesn't have enough wheel speed in second to do a burnout. I had to go to third. Because okay. um, it just goes straight to the rev limiter, as you heard. Yep. Even if it goes, you know, three, four hits of the rev limiter, let it hit. Okay. Wow! Dude, that leaves good. That leaves really good. I'm wondering about putting more gear in the car. Put a 488 in it or something like that. I, I think that that would be a detriment when we go on the juice. I'd actually like to go Plus the other way. Working. I think the car might be faster with a 373 in it. Since this will probably be the last hit, I'd like to take another pound of air out of the tires. Mm -hmm. Let's go down to eight and let's see what it leaves like then. Do we have nitrous in the bottle? Is it worth hitting the blower case with it? Uh, the bottle's full. I don't, I don't think it's worth it. Do you think we should take those out? The bricks? Yeah. No. Is it worth throwing dry ice in the cooler tank or having a bigger cooler tank? Probably not. Um, You're shooting down all my speed tips here. I know, <laughs> I know. I've tried most of your speed yeah. tips. <laughs> not working? Some of them do. Like it got loose. So yeah, it looked like it was doing this. We don't. Yep. We, we don't have any air with us, so we can't blow them back up. But we could click the shocks if you want to make another hit on it. Okay. Let me back out of the water. That picked up 400s in the 60 foot. Okay. And it looked like it drove much straighter, and it wasn't hopping. Yeah. Um, they definitely like that adjustment. We'd only been running eighth mile times at Milan instead of a full quarter mile, and it was a little bit frustrating because we were right at the 7.0 at 100 mile an hour number. We were dying to break into the sixes, go a little bit faster than 100, but still a huge success for a freshly built car on its very first day at the track. See, the smart thing to do would have been save the car, tune on it, make it faster, win, but this is roadkill, and so we're gonna road trip it. I've got the right angle of the dangle and squeeze of the trigger to keep this from leaking. Wow, that might be the shortest rain I've ever seen, but it'll still stop us, because we apparently have this wiper, sort of. Oh, maybe not. It's all about me. And, uh, and we have no windows, except this one. Don't be scared. And now we're heading off for our second test, which is 200 miles away at US 131 drag strip. I was gonna chicken on the rain and Finnegan said go for it. I now I'm getting wet. Good. As you said. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'd drive. Come on, Chinese fire drill. I can drive faster if you don't want to see your kids again. Ah, uh, this feels good. We haven't been in uh, grave danger in a long time on road kills. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> nice. Was it muddy? 
Ah, <laughs> oh, what a jerk. So the rain cleared up, which was nice, and then roadkill struck. Here's the good news. We're not dead? Right. <laughs> We're not off that side of the road, sliding sideways in a ditch. Wow, look how bad it smashed the fender. Yeah, we came down hard. Yeah. I'm surprised it didn't knock the emblem the right direction. How fast were we going, like 80? At least, yeah. We put on some old tires so that we wouldn't have to run on the pizza cutters, and it turned out that they were dry rotted, and this thing just destroyed itself. Look at that. Nice one. At least we're not using wrenches to hold these lug nuts on. Thanks for changing the tire. Nah, no problem. That's fun. It's the most excitement I've had all day. We worked on the car! <laughs> This is US 131 Motorsports Park, which is the scene of the end of the very first Hot Rod Drag Week in 2005. It was really good. You're old, it's before my time. I'll get the tools. This is our second track day with the General Mayhem. What we're gonna do today is re-baseline it from what we did out at Milan, and then we've got some different rear gears. We like panic ordered overnight a new center section from Mosier with 373s in it instead of the 410s that are in the car. We're gonna find out if that makes a difference in the way the thing works. The reason Copeland was thinking that the car might go quicker with a higher gear ratio, which is a lower number, is because with the root supercharger, it's got a lot of torque. It can really grunt against the gears, and right now it's just going through the gears really quickly. Copeland's one of those guys that's usually right, so we'll find out. That was good. Much, much better. You just picked up six miles an hour to the eight. Okay. It ran at a 706, which is our quickest to the eighth. Yep. And that was not our best 60 foot, even though it, it barely hit the rev limiter. Oh, dude, it was hazing it the whole way down. Did you see me driving the car? Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad for that, because it's more like what it's gonna be like. Once we swapped out the 410 gears and installed the 370s, initially it didn't look like we had really gained anything. <laughs> Then Finnegan got to the fine tuning on these QA1 shocks that are adjustable for both jounce and rebound, and we dialed in the traction. We cut a 168 60 foot time. We were still running in the 7.0s in the eighth mile, and all the way out the quarter, it was running 11.0, which was so frustrating because I was dying for this thing to get into the tens. But then the weather cooled down, and we brought out our secret weapon. Our 2015 Charger called the General Maintenance because that's all you ever have to do with it. And right now, it's gonna go head to head with the General Mayhem. At 125. It just keeps getting faster. Let's do some big smoky burnouts and get out of here. Wait this was a good day. Wait a minute. For me. I thought we were racing for reaction time here. <laughs> Episode right here is the big win. This is our first ever Roadkill Nights event. It was held during the Woodward Dream Cruise Week in Detroit. Our little web show pulled off a miracle. We got permission from the city of Pontiac, Michigan to create an eight mile drag strip in the parking lot of the old Silver Dome football stadium. 
Dodge brought in a full-on thrill ride event, putting people in Vipers and Hellcats for this drag and drift thing. They also brought in a band, gave a whole bunch of roadkill shirts away. It was a blowout hit. We got tons of local media and more than 10,000 people showed up. But we still couldn't film the race with the TV guys, so we had to find the next best thing. Well, there's a TV show right over there whose name we still can't mention, but what can you do? Um, so we're gonna go out here and see if we can find somebody who either has the hair gel and the jewelry or the t-shirt, right? And is willing to be on our little web show. Oh, that's right. They have to be willing to and sign the agreement. Right, yeah. not just go on the internet and talk about it. Right, I dig that. Dude, the Eagle Wagon. Oh, it's not the wagon, it's the hatch. Yeah. Ooh, for yeah. sale. Roadkill, how much is it? It's 8,500 bucks. What? Oh. I mean, it's amazing, but why is this $8,500? Because he's a legend, it says so right here. Oh. Oh, dude. See dude, this guy? his hair could be slick. Well, and he has the shirt on. Yes, he does. We need to ask this guy what's up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you racing here? Hold on, Tony. Yeah. You are? You are? Can we see your car? Yeah, it's uh, right show, here. show us your car. Our TV star stand-in is Jim Bowman, who's driving John Pappas' 69 Dodge Charger Daytona, a factory NASCAR wing car. This thing was shipped to Australia in 1973, converted to right-hand drive, and came back to the States in 2003. And now it's here at Roadkill Nights, ready to go head-to-head, -head, Charger to Charger. If we went and got some pomade or something, could you like do the hair and maybe get some more jewelry? Stand there and do this. It would be really good. <laughs> Why don't you get yourself some of that or whatever? <laughs> we got our man. I think we right. got our guy. We're good. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's perfect. Appreciate it. We should take a seven second race and chop it up so that it looks like it took three minutes, a bunch of different yeah, camera kind of like angles. And, and, yeah. slow, fat, and lazy? Get Dog Dog Food and see the difference. Go to DogDogFood.com and order today. Might have been a shallow victory, but at least it was a victory. We didn't do so well when we entered an eight car showdown of the fastest Dodges on site. The winner was Brandon Phillips in this 69 Super B, and he took home a free Hellcat powertrain, including the engine and a six speed manual trans, all courtesy of Dodge. So, what did we learn from all of this? Basically, watch your mouth on the internet and don't get involved with reality TV. People ask us all the time why Roadkill doesn't show up on a cable network, and this is why. Here on the web, we are totally in charge of our own destiny and our own show. No lawyers, no contracts, no private planes, no hidden clauses, and no faking it. Even so, we have to admit it was a pretty good time. And if this kicked off Roadkill Nights as an event series, it was all totally worth it. And we've got to admit, those guys from the TV show built a really cool car. These days, everyone is asking us what's next for the general mayhem. First, yeah, we get it. We have to get rid of those 2015 Charger taillights and go back to the stalkers. But next, we want to return the whole car to rally race trim and head back to Dirtfish with 707 horsepower worth of Hellcat blown Hemi. Will that ever happen? I don't know. If it does, you'll find out right here on Roadkill and not on some cable show. The good news is it's not hot anymore. The bad news is my right arm is soaked and I'm furry, so that just means I smell like a wet dog. 
This car doesn't even feel that illegal. It's got an airbag. Uh, the radio still works. <laughs> it's the darndest thing. How does he know where we're going? <laughs> In case you're wondering what we're referring to, planes, trains, and automobiles. Quality flake. Uh-oh. That's a lot of rain, really fast. I was just asking myself on the way in, are there any unmentionable television stars that might have driven their car 200 miles this morning to a drag strip to test and tune? We don't think so. This is an interesting door. You need to see this tech tip. This doesn't work, see? Not working very much. Nope, the roadkill version of slamming doesn't work. You have to use the gentle click. All good. Very gentle. It's the gentle mayhem. You did say swing around, right? Assuming they don't mind that. <laughs> Are we low on gas? It just stalled again. You killed it. <laughs> what did you do? 